Good morning. This is Sharad Gutikunda from Urban Emissions India. I am covering the topic, Can we vacuum Delhi's air pollution problem with smog towers? Short and immediate answer to this question is a big no. I am summarizing in this presentation some of the points highlighted in the paper with the same title. First, a smog tower is nothing but a glorified version of a vacuum cleaner. Uh, a vacuum cleaner itself has many applications. Uh, a small version can be used to suck all the dust out of a sofa or a rug. You can use it uh, to also suck dust on the roads, which happens from time to time. And it does provide some relief by reducing road dust suspension when the vehicles are moving fast. You can use it to trap dust in an industrial plant. You can also use it to suck and uh, trap dust in your rooms, aka air purifiers, which are now available in all the markets. But what you can't do is uh, uh, suck air in the open, clean it, and put it back in the same spot and expect good air quality for the city. Uh, we might as well say that we will launch a million air conditioners to counter global warming. As ridiculous as that sounds, an idea to clean air using smog towers is equally stupid. A quick look, now put an air purifier in the room. It will work uh, if you keep both uh, doors and windows closed. Uh, it doesn't take more than a few seconds for open of opening the door to let outside air back in and uh, the whole cycle begins all over again. A quick look at an industrial electrostatic precipitator. These are giant vacuum cleaners to trap all the dust in the flue gas before it enters the chimney. While these units provide uh, close to 99% efficiency, the sheer volume of dust produced at power plants is still visible in the one person that gets out of the chimney. This is, this is a, an example of a dilution system used in long road tunnels to reduce exposure levels. Large volumes of, large volumes of air is continuously pumped to push the pollutants out. In the above examples, the volume of air in question is finite with boundaries. But when it comes to outdoor air pollution, there are no boundaries. Every parcel of air is immediately replaced with a new downwind parcel of air which brings with it some pollution or anything that, is, that it is carrying. Before I get into some examples of smog towers installed in India, I would like to provide some basic information on why scientifically it doesn't make any sense to push this path for clean air. This is a basic unit of air pollution, micrograms per meter cube, which literally translates into emissions over volume of air. Irrespective of when the air is hot or warm or wet or dry, as long as we have emissions, we can calculate pollution levels. In simple words, no emissions means no pollution means no need for stupid ideas like smog towers. Using the same definition, let us assume that our city is a box. The width and length of the city we know. The height of the city is determined by prevalent meteorological meteorology by the term called mixing height or inversion layer. This is an invisible layer of air that, moment, that, that momentarily blocks vertical mixing or vertical movement of pollution. In the summertime, it is very high due to hot surface temperatures, meaning more volume of air and then the pollution value is less. In the winter time, it is the opposite, low mixing heights and high pollution levels. Your best options are if the city expands, then your length and uh, width of the city will, uh, expands and spreads the emissions across and reduces or you reduce the emissions. With metrology, it is completely out of our hands. The best option is always reduce the emissions at all the sources. Uh, in this table, I highlighted only two options here, uh, but please refer to the paper for more details on the table. Next up is uh, advection, aka physics. This step is defined by three main components, emissions at sources, movement of emissions, and scavenging of pollution via dry and wet deposition. There is another loss component, which is chemical reactions not shown in the picture. Again, if there are emissions, they will move, they will mingle, and they will materialize as pollution eventually. Scavenging components are very important as well, which we see every day, but usually go unnoticed. 
dry deposition in simple words it's settling of particles on various surfaces depending on the surface roughness the settle, settling rates are different some of the highest rates are for trees because of the inherent moisture and breathing nature of the leaves therefore it is very important to have vegetation along the roads anywhere to, uh, to that matter to guard us from excess exposure due to resuspension of emissions and dust in urban planning plantation is and should be the most important component and it has a very direct uh, relationship to air pollution wet deposition in simple terms settling of particles using a liquid uh, most often uh, it is water either via rain or by spraying water uh, we use this method in various situations uh, on the roads after trucks uh, suck up dust they also spray some water on the surface which suppresses further resuspension for at least another hour or so in delhi we heard of instances like uh, in this picture with fire engines spraying water in the neighborhoods to induce some settling in china for the annual festivity it was reported that cloud seeding was used uh, this is a very uncertain and very expensive proposition which cannot be repeated on a on a day to day basis movement of pollution also induces a source Uh, which includes a source which is not part of a city or region or, or its own sources technical term for this is long range transport which includes contributions from all four directions away from the city um example pie chart is from city of mumbai modeled using emission inventory and local meteorological fields with seasonal uh, outside contributions varying from 20 to 50% sometimes this outside contribution can be more than the local sources itself uh, which is a common occurrence in the you know, cities uh, of the indo gangetic plain i want to come to the main point again uh, if there are emissions irrespective of what meteorology is doing we will have pollution last science component is chemistry the chemical nature of particulate matter this does not include just the dust or direct emissions from sources as particles here we have black carbon the dark soot uh, from diesel and coal burning organic carbon the white soot from petrol and biomass burning dust uh, this is crustal elements like silicon aluminum iron and a few other metals the second half of the particles is the chemical reactions these are often product of a long range transport because these reactions need some residence time in the air to do their magic sulfur dioxide converts into its aerosol form sulfates nitrogen oxides reacting to volatile organic compounds and ozone convert into its aerosol form nitrates volatile organic compounds themselves convert into secondary organic aerosols which are different and in addition of the primary organic carbon which we have on the other side lastly ammonia from the fertilizers is also part of the game forming ammonium aerosols as you can see uh, pm 2.5 while it is one entity it houses parts from everyone hence the complexity of understanding where this pollution is coming from these components are evident only when example is chemically dissected and this provides a lot of useful information from the first glance at the components before any statistical modeling is conducted to ascertain the source fractions we can have an idea of the sources contributing to the sample like for example more potassium means biomass burning more sodium means sea salt more silicon aluminum calcium means dust more sulfates mean diesel or coal burning uh, because of their inherent sulfur content and so on in summary we have a complex problem at hand which is constantly evolving and not limited to just urban areas and not a phenomenon of episodes like diwali only this is a year round problem and it is everywhere which cannot be contained using vacuum cleaners in the middle of the road these towers started in china here is an artist's work in the middle of beijing's park made a lot of headlines saying this will clean cities pollution only after some time the title changed to these making rings with pollution these rings were sold out but uh, it didn't change any pollution levels not even in the park cost of this installation is unknown known only to the artist in india first known occurrence was before the commonwealth games with an installation of this box 
by an Italian company called, Sem it's called Simple Life. This was in Cannot Place, made a lot of headlines saying how this will suck up all the pollution in the area and provide fresh air. The cartoon was made using uh, by an artist using an article I published uh, at that time saying how useless this installation is. The box was gone and no discussion ensued during the games period. The cost of this unit was uh, $300,000 equivalent to 1.8, uh, 1.2 to 2 crores in 2010. Topic came back in 2016 and in several cities with the uh, Niri uh, Nagpur with their new Vayu box, uh, which pretty much resembles a garbage can in the middle of the road. Cost of these installations uh, is also unknown, mostly done using government funding, so there were a lot of discounts. Then the Supreme Court jumped on the bandwagon and insisted that Delhi builds its own smog tower because nobody else is doing anything to control pollution. An example they used, they in the Supreme Court used, uh, comes from Xi'an, China, a massive construction effort, which is now a park, more than it's more a park than uh, pollution control equipment. However, the wordings and papers will show that this is meant to exactly do air pollution control. Reported cost of this construction is $10 million, equivalent of 70 crores. In the following year, we got a baby version of this in Delhi with 7 lakh rupees from Gautam Gambhir's uh, foundation. If it is doing anything, no one knows. Uh, in September 2021, Chandigarh inaugurated their own. In August 2021, following the Supreme Court's orders, this 30 lakh IIT Mumbai designed smog tower was inaugurated uh, with big headlines saying that winter pollution will be less because of this. Government plans to build more of these in the city as part of their 10-point fight against air pollution in Delhi. None of these costs um, include any operational or maintenance costs. So you have to really keep in mind that this is just for building these or putting it in one place and everything else is extra. So none of these band-aid solutions are going to help solve this problem. And here is a snapshot of pollution levels in Delhi for the last two months. Uh, it has gradually increased in October and then in November, November's average pretty much stayed at 200 micrograms per meter cube. Uh, you can access uh, these summaries and air quality forecasts for Delhi at um, uh, DelhiAirQuality.info. It's time to stop looking at these stopgap solutions and uh, we need to uh, need a, a long term planning in, in, in place. COVID-19 and air quality made a lot of headlines in 2020 and 2021. The improvements in air quality was evident, immediately evident in all the satellite observations during this period. The animation presents a summary of all data from the Central Pollution Control Board for 120 cities for the four consecutive lockdown periods uh, and uh, all the data is also available on our website for downloading. These reductions uh, during the lockdown periods were very significant and as time passed, numbers also reach the old normal levels. These reductions were possible only because of direct reduction in emissions from all the sectors that we know of. Road, rail, aviation and marine transport were disrupted. Most of the commercial cooking activities and to some extent some regular residential cooking activities were halted. Most of the industries were shut and there was a reduction in the power generation rates before it would pick up again after a couple of weeks. Except for natural sources like dust, open fire, sea salt, and lightning, everything else saw some form of reduction and it immediately translated into pollution reduction across the country. These are some snapshots from India's first lockdown in March 2020. All the cities experienced these blue skies and clean air days. If the goal is to get back to these days and not worry about whether the weather will bring uh, some good news or how the chemistry will change the pollution levels, then the only way to do this is by cutting down emissions at all the sources as much as possible. The cost of these interventions will not be cheap and more than that, we need strong political will and commitment to make it happen. Also, what will really help is acknowledging the health effects that are associated with the current pollution levels. 
The Global Burden of Disease study estimated more than 1 million premature deaths due to outdoor PM2.5 pollution levels in India. In addition to this, if we start to account for short-term effects, hospital visits, productivity losses and other associated economic losses, for example, flight diversions and delays during the high pollution days, the cost of all the interventions to support long-term planning, long planning can be easily justified. Bottom line is, no, we cannot vacuum our way out of this problem. Thank you.